this concept of cycle syncing has been truly life-changing for me honestly and I don't know why it took me 27 years to finally learn about it because it should be common knowledge. Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Jills and I talk all about health, wellness, and self-development for women. So if that's me you want to learn more about, be sure to hit the red subscribe button below as well as the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos from me. Today I'm talking all about cycle syncing, aka how to sync your life to your cycle so you can have more energy, be more productive, live more in alignment, feel more connected to your body, and just live a happier and more fulfilling life. This is my favorite topic ever. So specifically cycle syncing is modifying your diet, your exercise, your work and productivity, and your social and personal life to certain phases in your menstrual cycle. Now that might sound extreme or maybe just unattainable, but it's really not. And you can go as little or as far into this as you want. It's totally up to you. I've personally found this to be really valuable for myself. And I firmly believe that this is something that every woman needs to know. And the fact that this isn't taught to females growing up is just kind of mind blowing to me. Now, I think growing up that a lot of us are taught either directly or indirectly that our periods are gross and that our menstrual cycle is just part of the struggle of being a female and I hate that approach. I think it's dumb, but of course, if your hormones are imbalanced, you know, and you're having painful or regular periods, then yes, I could see this being difficult and of course you should work on that and if so, go watch this video. But if our hormones are relatively balanced, we can actually start to use our cycle to empower us. But first things first, before I dive super deep into this, it's important for you to understand the different phases of your menstrual cycle and how your hormones change. So as you probably know, women have on average a 28 day hormone cycle, right? But this breaks down into four different phases. The first phase is our menstrual phase and I think we're all familiar with this one. This is the time when we're bleeding and when all of our hormones are relatively low. So when our period ends, we move into the follicular phase, and this is the period of time between bleeding and ovulation, and this lasts approximately 7 to 10 days or so, and this is when our estrogen levels are slowly rising. And next is the ovulatory phase, and this is not surprisingly when we're ovulating, aka when we can make a baby. So this lasts approximately 3 to 4 days, and this is when our estrogen and our luteinizing hormone peak. And last is the luteal phase, this is the time between ovulation and your next bleed. Now towards the end of this phase, our estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are all at their lowest point. So this is where it's really common to see those annoying pesky PMS symptoms that we don't want. Now this lasts about 10 to 14 days. I'm going to be referring to those different phases throughout the video. So I just wanted to make sure that I covered that and that you guys know what I'm talking about. So now that I have, let's dive in. We're going to chat about how to eat, how to exercise, how to work, and how to socialize and nurture your relationships based off of the phase you're in in your cycle. Let's start with our diet. And I feel like diet is oftentimes the least exciting info out of all of this, even though it's really important. But I'll try to make this quick so we can move on to the other fun topics. But during different times of the month, we actually have different nutritional needs. And so it makes total sense to adjust what we're eating and how we're eating during different times of the month. So during your menstrual phase, you want to make sure that you're eating a lot of cozy and comforting foods that are just easy to digest. So less salads, less raw veggies, and more foods like soups and stews, maybe some cozy, warm herbal teas, all that kind of stuff is great during this time. But then as you move out of the menstrual phase and into the follicular phase, it's common that we find ourselves wanting lighter and more vibrant foods. So steamed and sauteed veggies are great during this time, especially cruciferous veggies, because they can help support healthy estrogen levels. Now in the ovulatory phase, according to traditional Chinese medicine, this is one of the hot phases in our cycle. So it might feel really good to eat more raw and cooling foods. So fresh fruits and veggies, smoothies, salads, juices, or just lighter steamed veggies, this all might feel really, really good during this time in your cycle. And lastly is the luteal phase. So during this time, our metabolism actually increases and our body needs more calories. So if you find yourself getting hungrier during this time, it's totally normal and you should absolutely 100% eat when you're hungry and respect these hunger cues. Now this is also a great time for roasted root vegetables or other slow burning carbs. So things like roasted carrots, sweet potatoes, squash, these are all really great during this time. And also make sure you're getting enough fiber because fiber can help to flush out that excess estrogen 
and avoid estrogen dominance, aka PMS. All right, let's move on to exercise. I love this one because changing how I exercise based off of where I'm at in my cycle was a game changer for me. I actually struggled with some pretty bad exercise intolerance where if you don't know what that is, it's basically where after you have any sort of real workout, you get just you just feel sick and I felt like I had the flu for the next two or three days and it was terrible. But cycle syncing my workouts was incredibly helpful for this and made such a big difference. And it makes sense, our bodies are changing throughout the month so our workouts should change too accordingly. So in your menstrual phase, it's really, really important to take time for rest and to not push yourself to work out when it doesn't feel good, especially in the first day or two. If you are craving movement, then a nice long walk could be good or a gentle yoga flow something like that just something gentle and easier on your body and it's totally 100% okay to get an extra hour of sleep instead of hitting the gym if that's what feels right to you but when you move into the follicular phase you'll usually get a burst of energy this is a really good time for cardio based activities so things like running dancing biking these are all really good and you'll also feel a little bit more adventurous and open to trying new things so this is a good time for trying new workouts something that you've kind of been hesitant to try in the past now's the time in the ovulatory phase we're going to have the most energy so this is a really good time for those intense sweaty workouts or high intensity interval training now also this is the time in our cycle when we're the most social and we want to get out of the house and connect with others. So this is a great time to go to a group workout class if you can. And as we head into the luteal phase, it's best to transition from less cardio-based activities and more strength-based, low-impact type of workouts. So things like Pilates, bar, yoga, strength training, these are all really great during this time. Now keep in mind that as our luteal phase continues and we get closer and closer to our menstrual phase, it's likely that we'll have less and less energy. And that's totally normal and it's important to honor this. So as our period approaches, keep your workouts lighter and just more restorative. Real quick, if you're finding this info helpful, be sure to hit the like button, I really appreciate it. Now let's chat all about work and productivity. So let's be clear, we can do any sort of work at any point in our cycle but prioritizing our work tasks based on our cyclical strengths can help us from feeling just totally drained by the end of the day and instead we'll feel more accomplished, we'll get more done, our work will be way easier and it'll just be more satisfying too. So as we know in the menstrual phase, it's important to take this time a little bit slower, a little bit easier and be just more gentle on ourselves. Now our productivity is also going to be a little bit lower too and that's totally normal, that's totally okay. So even though you might not want to, this is the best time to just rest and reflect and evaluate. What didn't work out so well for you last month and how do you want to change that going forward? What are your goals and intentions for this next month? We actually have the most access to our intuition during this time, so just reflecting and evaluating can be a really helpful and powerful exercise, not only in work and business, but also just in life. Now in the follicular phase, your creativity is going to be at an all-time high. So use that creative energy to dream big and think of new ideas and focus on your creative pursuits and start planning. Your creative juices are gonna be flowing during this time, so just take advantage of it. As you move into the ovulatory phase, this is the time to focus on work that involves your communication and social skills. You're gonna feel way more social during this time and you'll naturally become a better communicator too, so this should feel good to you. So if you need to give an important speech, now's the time. If you need to go to some networking events, now's the time. If you need to hold an important meeting, now's the time. And keep in mind this also refers to the written form of communication so you, if you have a lot of writing to do then this could be a really good time to do it because you'll naturally be supported by this energy it'll come easier to you and lastly the luteal phase this is the time to wrap things up that you've been working on for the month tie up loose ends get organized and pay attention to detail now this is the time of the month especially as you get closer and closer to your period where you are going to feel less motivated and less creative and less inspired. And that's normal. So this is also a great time to focus on those just boring admin type of tasks that no one really enjoys, but just has to get done. All those tasks that don't really require much thought. Now, finally, let's chat about our personal life, our social life, our relationships with our friends, our relationships with our partners and our sex life. So kind of like what we talked about before, our menstrual phase is the time to go inward. So we're likely going 
going to want to spend more time alone, spend less time with our friends and less time with our partner. This is definitely the case for me. I really try to listen to my body and I try to avoid any sort of big social functions during this time if I can because they usually just don't feel very good to me. And I really just try to focus on resting and lots of self-care. Now it's also really common for our interest in sex and intimacy to decrease. So if this is the case for you, it is totally okay to take a few days off if that's what you need. In the follicular phase, our energy increases and so does our openness to new experiences. So this is a good time to go out with your girlfriend or go out with your partner and try something new and just do something different. So whether it's going to that new restaurant that just opened or trying a cooking class or maybe bungee jumping, it doesn't matter. Just do something fun and different and get a little bit creative. This will feel really good. And when it comes to sex and intimacy, again, you're gonna feel a little bit more open to new things and a little bit more adventurous. So if you wanna try something new, now's the time. Alrighty, ovulatory phase. This is a fun time. So like I said before, we're most social during this time. So this is a good time to go to a party or host a party or go on some fun group dates, but just don't coop yourself up at home during this time. We're meant to be social. We're meant to connect and get out in the world. If you coop yourself up at home and just stay alone, you're going to be very lonely and sad and it's not gonna feel good for you. We're also naturally more appealing to those of the opposite sex during this time because remember, this is our fertile window. So pheromones are high and all of that. So tip, if you're single, this is a great time to go out on a first date. You're gonna feel way more social, way more confident, and what's the word I'm looking for? Frisky. <laughs> and like I said, this is our peak fertility, so it's likely that our interest in sex and intimacy and all that is going to increase, so have fun. Now the first half of the luteal phase can actually feel really similar to the ovulatory phase, but as we move into the second half of our luteal phase, that's when we're more likely going to feel more of those dramatic shifts. So during this time, all of those like cozy, chill activities in are gonna feel really good, especially when we're just with those who we're really close with. Being at like huge social functions and meeting a bunch of people that we don't know is not really gonna feel good during this time and is likely to be really draining. So the perfect date night in is just Netflix and chill and you know, order takeout, watch a movie cuddle, all that kind of stuff. That's just gonna feel perfect. When it comes to sex and intimacy, it's likely that as we get farther along into the luteal phase, our partner's gonna have to put in a little bit more work to um, you know, get us interested and uh, take things maybe a little bit slower. Another thing that's really important to note during this phase is that we become very aware of what isn't working in our relationships and our lives, you know, any needs that are being unfulfilled and just any issues that we're having. So if our hormones are relatively balanced, do not just chalk this up to PMS. It's really, really important that you take some time to listen to this voice. And I hate this, but we've been kind of conditioned to ignore our thoughts and emotions during this time because, you know, people just say that women are hormonal, but if your hormones are relatively balanced, then you're not being hormonal, you're just being honest. But if your hormones aren't balanced, definitely go watch the video I mentioned before and I'll link it below too. And see if these thoughts and emotions change over time. If not, then it's probably not a hormonal issue, it's something else. So that was kind of a lot of info at once. So I really recommend when you start this to just pick one small thing to sync with your cycle and do that for a month and see how it feels. And then just keep building and building one small thing at a time. And after several months, you would have made a ton of positive changes without even realizing it and without feeling overwhelmed. You don't need to dramatically change your eating habits, your exercise, your work, your social life all overnight. That's totally not necessary. But you can ease into it and you could take it slow. And most importantly, you can take the things that resonate with you and leave the ones that don't. So let me know in the comments below what you guys are planning on syncing to your cycle first. For me, I chose exercise because it just seemed like a really easy one. And remember, I had all those exercise intolerance problems and it helped a ton. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about cycle syncing or other cool wellness-based topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. Bye, guys.